Okay, this is another documented update on um, Misha's condition. Now, this is what transpired Friday. Um, within the last four or five days, I've noticed that there's been a, a problem with I don't know if it's a problem, but it's something that I noticed that Misha's doing that she hasn't done before with her respiratory. As she's breathing, um, it's almost like a cough, and her chest cavity like jumps. It happens every maybe 10 to 15 seconds for maybe, it can go on for 4 minutes, up to 7 to 10 minutes. Um, she does it while she's sleeping, she does it while her eyes are open, if she's not moving, or she's laying there still conscious but with her eyes closed. When she does like do like a like that, her legs tend to like jerk, her back legs. So I'm going to make this as quick as I can because I need to compress my video. Uh, I called Friday morning spoke with one of the girls at Pulaski Animal Hospital. I explained to her what my concerns were with her breathing. I asked, I need advice. I'm gonna, I wanna send a video and let me know is this something I should be concerned about. And uh, she, I think she asked, I said, I'm not sure um, um, which, she uh, asked, well, what doctor is Dr. Collada? I, I said, well, Dr. Collada is her primary doctor, but Dr. Spinder is the one who has been treating her as of recent, uh, when she had this bacterial infection, which was another issue with, with the video that I sent, um, but I'll get into that soon. So she, I told, and, and, and I, I explained to her, I said, listen, I just lost Hippie. I said, I need to find out if this is something I, I, I need to get, be, be concerned about. And, and in saying so, I got emotional. She, I guess, felt compassion. She said, hold on. She went and I, I, I um, she went and talked to Dr. Spender. Dr. Spender came back, uh, or she came back and said, Dr. Spender said, uh, if you can bring her tomorrow morning and drop her off, when he has time, he'll take a look at her. Um, I can't get, I, I said, listen, I can't guarantee if they'll have a ride tomorrow, they, especially that early. They wanted me to bring her in at like around 8. I said, let's do this. And this is exactly what I told her. Let me monitor her to see if there's a change. Because I noticed that um, when I do these uh, sub, sub, I can't even pronounce the word, subcaceous, subplaceous treatments, uh, it's, uh, where you inject fluids under the fur for dogs that need to have their kidneys flushed. When I do that, I notice that her body becomes bloated, she doesn't want to eat, and then shortly after she may vomit. So I don't know if that has anything to do with it. But anyway, I said, let me monitor her because I have to do this treatment. Um, and, uh, and I just want, you know, I, I just need to uh, know. Well, not, well, I didn't do it till, I didn't do the treatment until yesterday. But I said, if the doctor, if the doctor, uh, you know, when he's done, could you just, you know, before the end of his day, and this is what I said, because I don't like bothering him when they're busy during the day. I said, before he leaves, just before he walks out the door, could you have him call me and let me tell him, is this, you know, this is what I'm hearing. Um, do you want a video? Is this something I should be concerned about? What should I do? It was just a simple, you know, I just get quick advice from him. You know, I'll just tell him, this is what I hear. What do you suggest I do? Do you suggest I put, bring her in on another day? Because I can't, I couldn't bring her in at the last minute like that. So she said, okay, I'll let him know to call you at the end of the day. Now, I, I don't, I can't, I don't remember the girl's name, but she did mention it. If I hear her name mentioned to me, I would recognize it. So, about, um, an hour, a little more than an hour later, I had to go do something. And I, I hate leaving her because Misha's completely blind now. Now I'm thinking she can't even hear because when I call her, she doesn't respond. So I'm thinking she's losing her hearing as well now. She's having problems with her balance. So 
I tried taking her out to go to the bathroom and she just, just didn't want to get up. So I said, okay, I'm going to leave you here. Don't move. I'll come right back as soon as I'm done. I walk out the door. Not even 12 seconds. She was on the bed. 12 seconds. I walk out the door. I realize I didn't bring my mask. I walk back in and here's Misha on the f kitchen floor in a puddle of body fluids and vomit and she's laying on her side and you can see, and it's obvious that she must have either had a con um, I don't know if she flipped uh, or, or what happened but she had this bodily fluid all over her on her both of her side torsos so I don't know if she had a seizure or if she fell off the like, you know she has to come off a ramp and there's about maybe a six to maybe seven inch uh, lift from the kitchen floor where the ramp starts I don't know if she hurt her back and she couldn't get up but I noticed she had a gait I mean when I was I was like trying to get her attention she wouldn't even respond she didn't even look at me she, and she just kept going like she was trying to breathe like she was dying and that's what it looked like she was giving her last breath her 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 eyes were transfixed straight ahead didn't look anywhere else it was just like like a death stare like someone dead their eyes are just staring into nothing and her mouth was like like that I panicked I tried calling the hospital no one picked up I tried calling my neighbor to see if he can take me you know see if I, I can get a ride because this I'm thinking she's dying I couldn't get a hold of him I called the hospital again I call and I said listen you know, the girl, uh, some other girl picked up. I said, this is what happened. This is what I'm looking at. I said, I think she's dying. I said, I think I need to bring her in. It, I mean, and the girl said, hold on. She comes and then she comes back and she goes, how soon can you get here with her? This is her exact words. And I said, I have to get a hold of somebody, my neighbor. And, you know, once I can get a hold of him, and if he says he can take me, I'll give you a call right back. And I'll let you know how soon I can get there. I hung up. I was able to get a hold of him. And he said he would take me. I had to clean Misha up because she was covered in this flu. It, she, it was obvious she lost control of her bladder. And when I saw that, I said, oh my God, that's a sign that she's going. That's the impression I got. That's what things that I've heard. We got So I called the hospital again. I said, okay, I'm bringing her in. I got her cleaned up girl goes okay when you get here you know you know I inform now this is what her exact word Every, I inform everybody they know that you're coming in with Misha that was her exact words who she told I don't know at that point I didn't care who saw Misha I don't care if it was Dr. Spender or Dr. Kalada whoever was there I thought she was dying she was gone so I get her so I we got we got her there I walk in the door I'm carrying her because she couldn't even stand and uh, Maria that's one of the girls that worked behind the desk I've had a talk with her before I said listen uh, I'm here uh, I spoke with one of the girls they said that they had informed I'm not sure who that we were coming in I said this you know what happened with Misha she looked at me and she said oh, hang on she goes into the back comes back less than a minute later and she goes well I don't know who you were gonna see but if it's Dr. Spinder he's gone and I said well who I said okay well who else is here because I said the girl said that they're she said they they more than one are expecting an occur in and I explained to her what kind of condition she was I assumed that when she told me that they considered that you know something like if you're gonna if she's dying you know either put her down or, or what she goes well nobody she goes nobody is available I said oh whoa, 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 whoa. I said no 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 I said the girl I spoke to I said you know what I need to speak to that girl because this is what she told me I like to know who she spoke with if she wouldn't even she wouldn't she said wait I don't know what girl you're talking about and I said well which girls were here in the morning and she goes well there was three I said, well, which ones? She wouldn't give me their names. And I said, okay, 
are these because there was another girl there there was a couple of other girls there i said maybe they're two of the girls that were here in the morning she goes no we're all this is what she's telling me that we just came in uh i don't know who you spoke with and i said well you i mean i said well it's pretty easy to figure it out either if they're if these two other girls are not one of one of the uh, shifts in the morning then you know who was here in the morning it's one of the three or whoever whoever left so she you know she just kind of looked at me and uh she said well we got nobody here i said there's no one here to take care of you i don't know what to tell you and then she gets up and she walks and she walks into the back room where it says employee uh, employees uh, all only she goes in and closes the door and i said you gotta be kidding me i said you know now dr spender had given you know had called me on his personal phone he has text messaged me from his personal phone and one of his text messages says call me anytime call me anytime that's what i did it went straight to his voicemail okay now i'm really livid because i was informed to come in and now they're saying there's nobody here nobody can see him i said well what about her primary doctor uh as uh i'm asking this other girl and she goes i, I don't know and i said okay do you have an who's the office manager working today and i said is it cheryl and the girl goes well we only have one today i said okay is it cheryl and she goes yes i said forget it and i'll get to the reason why i said that and then and, and, uh you know as i said that maria comes out of the office and i can tell she's talking to somebody in the office and she comes back out and she, she started you know dealing with someone else another customer and I waited, and then Dr. Collada came out, spoke with this other patient, uh, cl uh, uh, patient's uh, owner, and uh, and I asked the girl, well, would Dr. Collada, if I left, you know, if I, you know, waited, you know, would he be able to look at her when he has time? And she says, well, that's up to Dr. Collada if, if he wants to see her. Knowing what kind of condition she was in, what I what I explained to her and she she goes well if you want and i said well wait a minute i said i was offered a drop off yesterday or for tomorrow i mean is that still available i said and i told the girl if i can get a ride if not then you know i i won't come in if it's available she goes well let me look she goes we have an opening at 8 and 8 45 and i said i i don't know i said if I don't call, then I won't be able to come in. You know, if I if I call, that means I'll have somebody you know to, to bring me in with her. So later in the day, I get a text message from Doctor Spinder, and let me read it. Now I'm furious because I know who's in the office when Maria went in there it was Cheryl she didn't have the nerve to come out to talk to me and I'll tell you why because when Hippie and Misha were sick on uh, the beginning part of uh, last week of April I sent a video because of what I noticed especially they're both terminally ill Hippie had cancer and her kidney they found out was failing so there was no help hope for her but if what I was experiencing with her that the day before I videotaped it because she did it again in the early morning I submitted the video to the office on their mobile line and I called up and I spoke with some girl there and I said listen uh, I need dr. Collada to look at this because I think hippies going um, she's she's um, doing all sorts of you know stuff and then, yeah so the girl goes well uh, dr cloud is not in today and i said well who's there and they said well um dr spinger but he was busy i said is cheryl there and she goes yeah i said well listen could you ask say uh, could you have cheryl look at it at the video i just need her advice is this something i should i should 
maybe bring her in and prepare to say goodbye to her or what because she was in pretty bad shape she goes okay let me go tell Cheryl she puts me on hold she comes back shortly afterwards and she goes Cheryl says she's a little busy right now she'll call you right back let me explain something to you this is the same line Cheryl uses every time with me that she's busy she's busy she's busy she'll call me right back she never calls I'll wait I'll wait an hour three hours later and I won't get a call back so I'll call to see if she has time to answer my question so anyway she never called I call back again the girl says uh, she's with the customer right now but I'll have her call you as soon as she's done okay I waited an hour and a half no answer I call again because now I'm with I'm hippie she's up but she's having a hard time breathing now this is Monday she was doing this Sunday she I call back a third time the line goes automatically to the voicemail I called another three or four times after that it was still the same thing it goes to their voicemail finally I mean I'm getting agitated I'm getting panicky I call again finally they answer and I said I said hi I said I've been waiting for Cheryl to call me I need to have her take a look at this video if she's too busy can you have someone else look at it and give me you know an idea should I bring her in is this something that maybe this is a sign that she's going and I need to just say goodbye that day she goes well the other doctors are busy and I said oh I said all right is Cheryl available she goes I think so let me go check she goes she comes back she goes Cheryl is finishing up on what she's doing her exact words she told me to tell you she will call you in three minutes I waited three minutes no call I waited a half hour no call I waited till closing time no call so from Monday all the way up until Thursday I called to find out because her condition was worsening and I you know I can't you know I can't I have to prepare to get a ride there so I need to know from them ahead of time the hospital should I bring her in if they say yes then I'll try to find myself a ride to get her there no call Thursday hippie took a turn for the worst I was up with her from 11 all the way till 7 in the morning and at that point I realized she was going there was just there was no way she was in so much pain she couldn't even breathe I called my friend I said you know what we're going I need to take her I called the hospital I called the clinic I said listen I said this is Dave Ortiz I don't care I don't want to hear nothing I'm bringing hippie in I'm gonna have to put down and they said well let me just I said no 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 then they said well you know why don't you take her to the emergency room I said no I said you are her doctors you were supposed to advise me on do you think this is something I should bring her in on don't tell me to take her to an emergency room because this is a last-minute thing you didn't have the decency to call me when I gave you uh, you know uh, when I informed you of what was going on on Monday I said no you you better expect it because I'm coming there with her now and she's the girl said okay okay we got her there I said goodbye to, I, I put her down I was in the room with the hippie I, I, I mourned I came out and who's standing out there in the hallway Cheryl with her little mask on and she's just staring at me and what does she do she waves her hand real cutesy like and says hi like that that was it hi do you think I really want to talk to you right at that very moment I'll tell you what I wanted to do but I'm not gonna say it so Cheryl is completely worthless I don't know and if you look at the Google reviews on Pulaski Animal Hospital all the negative reviews are referring to no call returns uh, uh, you know um, 
mess, mixed messages and rude employees. And a lot of them refer to the office manager, which is Cheryl. This is no surprise to me. So, I sent, uh, I started doing uh, hippie or uh, hip, Misha's tr sub, whatever this treatment is called. And, and this is, the, finally, I get a response from Dr. Spinder the next following, or that uh, later that evening, I believe, Friday evening. Not during the time that I had called him, but it was later in the evening. And this is the message he sends me. Okay. Um, all right. Uh, just a moment. Uh, yeah, you can call me anytime. I, I, I saved that. Okay. David, I was leaving the clinic when you called and were on hold. I was completely booked, but advised the rece receptionist to see if she can squeeze you in or do a drop-off tomorrow, which he was referring to Saturday. Uh, I assume you wanted to have the pause check. That's not what I said, because uh, Misha's, her paws are inflamed. They're swollen. She can't walk. This is something I already discussed with him, and he suggested just, he informed me it was her allergies. I had to soak her paws. Okay, that's not what I told the girl. I, I specifically told her it was her breathing, her respiratory. So why he would say that, unless of course the girl never told him or told him something completely different, I don't know. So uh, I assume you wanted to have the ch uh, pause check. I was not aware of what happened after that. My staff is instructed not to, hang on, um, instructed not to bother me at home unless it's one of my surgical patients. If it is a true medical emergency, then we usually advise you to go to the emergency, especially before closing. If Misha is sick, that's where you need to go. I'm sorry you're, you're having problems, but I can't get in touch with my own doctor after hours. As I said last time, you are very un, if you are very unhappy with our service, and tomorrow morning I will get your records and mail them to you or your vet, please advise them. Take care. That's what he sends me. First of all, he never ever had a conversation with me concerning whether or not I was happy with their service. I don't know where he where he's, he came up with that. That wasn't the issue. The thing is, I was told that everyone was aware to bring her in, that they're waiting. That's exactly what the girl said. So. I need to know what this girl said, who told her that they were waiting for her, because that's what they were. T that's what I was told. But when I got to the, the animal uh, hospital, they said they didn't know nothing about it. That, that nobody was there available. So that's why I asked, "Where's who's this girl? Who's the girl that talked to me? We'll straighten this out now." They didn't want to give me names. They didn't want to give me names. What does that tell you? It's not about now. I can tell you why they don't want you know they did they this they, they didn't even have the audacity to to call me to let me know you know what we made a mistake maybe don't come in no I already, I already have somebody driving me having them waste their gas to get me here to there just to turn around with this with Misha still suffering. I was up with her uh, all day, Saturday, Saturday night. I didn't get back to bed till six in the morning today. Today, Sunday, she was sick. I had to, I have to make sure that I am with her every four hours, or I have to get her up every four hours to go to the bathroom. So I waited to take her to the bathroom. And she got sick in the early morning, puked everywhere. So now I'm really concerned because she didn't she didn't eat nothing at all yesterday. This morning she only picked at her food. Right now she's just laying there. So I don't know what's going on with her. 
I don't know what this message means. It's not a question. And he says, it's not a question of your quality of service. This, I, you know, you, they're great doctors. I don't have a problem with the service from the doctors. It's the problem where the staff who member who's in charge of the office, which is Cheryl, well, her maiden name is Drasky. She doesn't like me because I'm annoying. That's what she's told me on the phone. She's also made the comment that she regrets talking to me. And I had, a, I had one of my friends who overheard her say that because I had her on, uh, Cheryl on speaker because I couldn't hear what, what she was saying when I was at my friend's house because my friend uh, had a caregiver that was doing some work. So my friend heard the comment that Cheryl said to me that she regrets talking to me and she and Carol and as soon as Cheryl said that she hung up not a goodbye or anything I didn't even get a sorry from Cheryl for not calling me when she said she would numerous times I didn't even get a sympathy card for hippie from them but yet they took, they took, you know, I paid for the euthanization, it was like $168. But not even, sorry for your loss. That's Pulaski Animal Hospital. And here, I know Dr. Spinder, who's the owner now of Pulaski Animal Hospital, which is not even a hospital, which is misleading. Any Anyone who, who, who can reasonably think would think that when it's a hospital, you function as a hospital. I've left the girls there when they've had surgeries when they were healthy and younger. They spent the night there. I was under the assumption, okay, well, it's a hospital. They're, you know, they're being monitored overnight. Then they must be open 24 hours or something. No, they're not. So this is this is this is an ongoing thing with this. Not the doctors, at least not with me. I have no problem with the doctors. Is it's when I call, and I'm, I'm you know, I, I try to be as calm as possible. If you tell me you're going to call me, or you're going to have the doctor call me, I'm going to take you for your word for it. The problem arises when you don't call me, or I have to call numerous times because any other person would do the same thing. They would get agitated. Especially when they're following your instructions or you know, listening to what you're telling them that you're going to get a call back from them and it never comes. Yeah, so anybody with a, you know, a, you know, common sense would probably react the same way I do. And reading some of these Google reviews, that's how some of these, that's how these other people responded as well. They got, they got, ag they get agitated. They made comments. The office manager's rude, or you know they don't call back, or you know they put you on hold and they forget about you. Now the times that I've I've called the the hospital, I've always been you know I've noticed that it seems like when I call I'm always on voice you know the voice uh, it goes straight to voice message. I call uh, you know every moment of the day, you know. And it's the same thing. So I'm thinking, wow, they're really busy. So I'm thinking, well, wait a minute. I wonder if they got caller ID. So one time I asked one of the girls if they had caller ID. And the girl kind of just, you know, she was like, uh, no, no, we don't have caller ID. Well, with this issue with Hippie, I asked again. And the girl that I spoke with, um, she confirmed what I, what I believed the whole entire time. She said, yes, we do have caller ID. So that tells me they know my number. Every time that I've called, they chose, when they, my number pops up, they, they're familiar with my number, they won't answer. I've had where the phone rang two or three times and all of a sudden, click, it disconnects. I call back again, ring one or twice, click. Somebody's hanging up. This is a problem that is apparently Dr. Spinder is aware of. 
And I'm sure he's aware that a lot of these complaints revolve around Cheryl. And I've even told him that. I, I mentioned all the instances that I've had problems with Cheryl. No one else. Just Cheryl. But yet, I question whether or not this has been brought to her attention, or if he's even had any talk with her, or any disciplinary action. Apparently not, because it still continues. And if staff members are rude to uh, patients' owners, then they're, it's just a reflection of how Cheryl treats uh, you know, the customers. Because the apple doesn't fall far from the tree. If the supervisor, you know, exhibits that type of behavior, what does that, what type of, ex, uh, you know, exemplary, you know, message does that send to the employees that she's supposed to be, you know, supervising and setting as an, ex, you know, setting positive examples for? I refuse, you know, what I refuse to talk to Shell because, God help, if I ever, <laughs> if I ever talk to her, it won't be nice. So, this, I, uh, I'm, I'm sending, I'm, I'm sending a videotape. I have to compress it so I can be sent via my telephone to Dr. Spender's phone. And I'm going to explain to him. This is the reason why I called. Not for her pause, for her breathing. Now, what happened after, you know, the, you know, the conversation with the young lady regarding her respiratory uh, breathing that I noticed that was completely unexpected how I found Misha on the floor I had no idea that was going to happen that wasn't my the reason I called originally that she was dying no I called just to ask this respiratory can you take a look at it can you tell maybe I need to have her evaluated her, her you know what's her her, her, uh, her quality of life you know, evaluation with these treatments I'm giving her. That's all it was. This incident with her just laying there, she looked like she was dead. She looked like she was dying. Laying in her own vomit and bodily fluids. What, am I, what would you think? How would you react? She's my emotional support. She's the only one I have left. And my girl, Hippie, because of Cheryl, she didn't. She didn't pass the information on. If she couldn't look at it or advise, she should have. Like I, I asked to go, have her pass it to the, her doctor. I need to find out because I don't want hippie suffering. I need to prepare and make sure I have transportation to get her there to say goodbye. She, the girl even said, "I asked to go." She asked Cheryl, did she even look at the video? And, and I know what day I asked her that. She. It was on a Wednesday. She came back after she spoke with Cheryl and she goes, yeah, Cheryl's aware she did see the video. And that's when she said she would call me back. She never called me back. So if you saw the video, and if you can't respond to me, I asked the girl to ask to have you have her doctor look at it, Dr. Collada. Because I'm not going to ask for Dr. Collada on the phone because I know he's busy. I, and I'm, every time I have to refer to her doctor, I always tell the girls at the desk, have them call me at the end of the day. Because I always reiterate, I don't want to trouble Dr. Collada during the day because I know he's busy. Now, there's been you know a few times, maybe even several times, that he has, and he does. He Dr. Collada does call back. Maybe once or twice, he, you know, something comes up, he doesn't. But he does. There's been a you know a few times, if not more, and it's you know my fault that I don't. He does call, but either I don't hear the phone because it's nowhere near me, or um, um, whatever reason I'm, I might be on uh, line with maybe my therapist because I know he called one time while I was on the phone with my therapist and I couldn't you know answer his call, but he does call. So I say when he's done at the end of the day because I don't want to trouble him. That's all. That's all I ask. That's all I ask. All these problems could be easily avoided if the office manager does their duties as expected as an office manager. One of her duties 
as an office manager is to deal with customers' complaints. She doesn't do that. I had one, one conversation with her that she finally answered after me calling numerous times. Almost, I think it was like a, oh, it was a week. A week of waiting for Misha's test results. When I should have gotten it, uh, the, the test was done on a Friday. I should have gotten it on a Monday, the next following, the next following week. I didn't get it till Saturday. And the test results told me that she had renal failure. I had to wait six days to find out this test result. This is something that, that shouldn't have waited that long. That's serious. Nobody called. Nobody. I said, I said, listen, is there anybody there that can give me their test results? No, only uh, uh, the doctor or maybe Cheryl. Okay, I know Cheryl can because afterwards she had access and she looked up Misha's uh, test results and she said in Cheryl's own words, "These aren't as bad as you know, I, you know, as you make it or as she thought it would be." She says it's not too bad. So that tells me she has she had access and she could have easily have given me the test results right there and then. When she, you know, when she had it brought to her attention, she chose not to. That's part of your duty, Cheryl. And when I have complaints, you're supposed to address them with the customer. That's me. You may not like me. That's fine. I don't care. You know, I'm not there for myself. I'm not there to to make friends with anybody. I'm there because I'm concerned about my pets, the business that you're in. I'm not the patient. They are. So whatever feelings, because I call, because I'm concerned about my pets, because I, 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 I ask so many questions, you're going to be annoyed? Well, that's too bad. They have no voice. They can't speak and tell you, you know, what's going on. I have to be their voice for them. I need to express myself for them and make sure they get the quality care that they need and deserve. I'm not asking you, Cheryl, to, to look at them because you're not a doctor. But what you are is somebody who's supposed to be, you know, you know, taking, you know, uh, making sure the staff is doing what they're supposed to do, making sure that they're not giving bad information or wrong information, and that they are, you know, Make sure. I'm sorry. I'm getting really, uh, really mad. That if they're going to tell you a a, a a a customer that they're going to call you back, or they're going to have the doctor call you back, then fine. If they can't, if they're not able to return your call with the information that you need, or that the doctor's not able to call you at the end of the day, have the courtesy to just call that that customer and say, listen. Unfortunately, this is what you know what's happening. I can't promise you now that that they, whoever is going to call you or that I might be able to give you your answer today, but I will try to find out for you tomorrow. If you say that, then there's no problem. Acknowledge to the customer that you're not forgotten when you discuss issues that is relatively important for their family member, their pet. Cheryl's become you're way too comfortable. She, you know, she has her staff do her dirty work by instead of her coming out and you know confronting the customer and talking to him, she'll tell the, her you know her employees, you know, you go deal with it. You know, just tell them this or tell her that or whatever. She won't come out. At least not with me now because she knows how I feel and after. After what happened with Hippie, I made sure the look I gave her made it perfectly clear that you better stay away from me. You better stay away from me because you're the cause of me or Hippie suffering for that amount of time. Had you have just passed the word along or just looked at the video and called me and said, yeah, you know what, maybe you better bring her in. We'll try to set something up to bring her in if you're going to put her down. No. No. Let the poor animal suffer 
14 years that they've been a patient of theirs. Never a problem. Never a problem up until I had to deal with Cheryl. And this all stems from me asking her back in well before the pandemic started, probably in 2016, 2017, where they, you know, I, I, I made, I made a, a question to her that, do you honor, you know, competitive prices, pricing on, you know, a heartworm or, you know, medical uh, um, products for dogs? Will you match prices like with Pet Med or Pet RX? Cheryl said, yeah, you know, you know, but I have to verify the ad. So, and that's what I did. I gave her, you know, the, the link, whatever. She confirmed it. She goes, yeah, we'll match it. So with that, because right now, at that time, I was going through some hardship. And to this day, I'm, I'm still going through hardship, but not, not too bad as it was before. So for three seasons, when it came, when I did their medical fitness testing and went in for their, um, their heartworms, I would ask her, can you match the price? She said, yes, for three seasons. On the fourth season, when I asked her, she got snippy with me. She said, listen, I can't give you br uh, breaks on the price all the time. Oh, okay. All right, that's all I need to know. And that's fine. So, I just stopped, you know, you know, or, you know, getting, the, you know, the heartworm medication from them. And it's not because I was being cheap. It's just because the the financial strap that a stress that I was under, I just couldn't do it. And ever since then, every time I had to have a discussion with her, it was like he and Han, or uh, she'll say, well, I'll have to get back to you. I'll have to get back to you. And that's when the problems where she never called back started. During the pandemic, when it started, I needed medication for hippie. I had no way of getting there, so I called and I asked, after I finally got a hold of Cheryl, could you mail me the prescriptions? I'll pay for it over the phone. And, you know, you know, I'll, can you mail it to me? She said, well, I don't know how soon I can mail it to you. I said, well, don't you have, like, mail pickup? Give it to the mailman. She goes, well, we'll see. Here I find out, I guess after work, she decided she was going to take it to <clears throat> or whenever she had free time, she was going to take it to the post office and have it to, you know, mail to me. Well, the nearest mail uh, uh, facility, uh, the USPS facility, is on Archer and Laramie, or Archer and Laverne, which is maybe maybe three miles from Pulaski Animal Hospital, maybe four. You know what she tells me? She took it to the postal office on Lexington Avenue. Lexington Avenue is right off of I-90, uh, I uh, the Eisenhower. That's far, far, far from the Pulaski Animal Hospital. And then I, and then I didn't get it. I didn't. It took me almost five, six days to get the medication. And then here's another thing. I had to wait for. Uh, uh, some 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 sort of uh, I don't know if it was a test result for hippie or, or whatever. And Cheryl's supposed to call me. I waited, and finally, after uh, uh, a couple of days, a few days, Cheryl, you know, said, "Okay, I'll call you at the end of my shift today." I waited on that particular day. Five o'clock rolls around. Six o'clock rolls around. After 5 o'clock, when there was no call from Cheryl, I said, she's gone. They close at 5. She stiffed me again. So when I called the next following day, she got out of the phone because I was up, I was ticked off. I said, I want to talk to Cheryl. Cheryl gets on the phone. She goes, oh, yeah, you know, you know, I was in the office till 9 o'clock in the evening that night. And I said, well, why didn't you call me? I was waiting for your call. She goes, well, it was 9 o'clock. I didn't know if you'd be up. So I didn't bother calling. It was a test result. It was for a test result. This is, this is what we deal with.
Now, I'm not going to drop, you know, them. Because right now, Misha needs them. If they got a pro if she's got a problem with me, well, that's fine. You can you can have a problem with me. Don't ignore her. Don't you know toss her to the side because you don't like me. I'm depending on you to to give me advice. The doctors. I need to find out where she stands right now with her with her her uh, kidneys. Right now she's at stage two. With with what's been going on the last several days with her uh, not eating or and her vomiting, I'm concerned that it's no longer at stage two. So I need to have her brought in, have a blood test done to see where we're at now. What is the status of her health right now? I need to know what's the quality of her life right now. I can tell you, when I give her these, these uh, treatments, these succulents or whatever they refer to, I'm sorry, it doesn't seem like she's happy. It doesn't seem like she, afterwards she's just lays there. And I can tell that the fluids are just sitting in her. But it's just as recent that I know when she's bloating. And after I give the treatment, she doesn't have an appetite. And if she doesn't eat, then she starts throwing up. So is the fluids just sitting in her? Is it not being absorbed into her body? Uh, you know, I don't know then these are questions these are questions I need to ask the doctor but you can't because I can only ask that them when their day their shift is over but if they don't get the message then it's not that I suffer well I do because I suffer with anxiety they suffer well no it's just her So I'm going to compress this video. Hopefully I can send it to Dr. Spender. I had him, I asked him to call me because I need to get her in this week. I need to find out what's going on with her. What is going on with this breathing issue? Because she's still doing it. I don't recall her ever doing that. I don't know if this has something to do with her, with her treatments that I'm giving her or if there's something else going on with her. I need to make an appointment. That's why I called. I called to see... If this was a, 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 a reason to have her come in, simple as that. Nothing more. Not con wasn't concerning her pause because that that issue was already addressed between Doctor Spender and I. The conclusion came that I had to give her frequent antibacterial uh, clean cleansing on her pause with her shampoo, medicated shampoo. That's what I did. That's what I'm doing. It was solely on her respiratory, nothing more. So I don't know where, why he would think it was her paws, because I never told the girls about her paws. I told her it was respiratory. I made it clear to her, because I said it numerous times, at least four times. So this is, this is what I do. I document everything. But I'll tell you one thing. If they say you know what we don't want to see her anymore you're turning your back on a, a dog that you've been treating especially now that she's terminally ill why are you why now that you do you decide you don't want now i don't know i'm just saying right now i'm just this hypothetically if they tell me that the re, if they tell me that it's not because of her it's because i'm annoying and it's i shouldn't be the determination whether or not they're going to continue seeing her. I can't, I don't have the luxury of finding someone else. There's a, a vet not too far from me, I, you know, I, but I know they're far, far expensive. And I've heard from people that have pets that live in my area that I'm familiar with that have told me stories about this other particular uh, veterinarian. No, I'm not going to take them to them. And I'm especially not going to switch doctors for, with them not knowing exactly what's going on with Misha. Even though if, they, if, if, if Pulaski Animal Hospital transfers their uh, med her medical records, you know, I don't know who this guy is. I don't know what, what he's 
what he's going to do. I don't know if he's a good doctor, but I know that the doctors at Pulaski Animal Hospital are. And that's Dr. Clotta is Misha's doctor. I'd rather have him with her to the very end. That way, at least I know that he did everything he possibly could for her. I don't know what these other people will do. I don't know if, you know, right now, I need her with me. She needs me with her. So we have to be together when we go on these treatments or, you know, when I go to the doctors. Because she can't, she can't see. Now she, I'm almost positive she can't hear. Because I can, I can not scream, but say her name really loud. And she still doesn't seem to acknowledge it. So that, all right, so, you know, I'm going to, I got to send this video and I'm going to wait till a res I get a response. And once I get a response, I'm going to do, I'm going to document this and record this as well. Okay. Okay. Um, I'm doing a follow up in regards to um, the initial inquiry I made to uh, Pulaski Animal Hospital on Friday last week that would have been um, I believe the 16th of June okay so <clears throat> in my last document documentary uh, journal that I'm creating for myself um, the last message I received from Dr. Adam Spender would have been on that same day, I believe, of, just a moment, the 16th, yeah, so I, uh, I sent him a text message in regards to what had uh, transpired, I don't know if it was a miscommunication, um, uh, briefly reiterate what I had stated uh, in my last uh, journal documentation. I initially contacted the hospital on Friday of last week to uh, discuss, you know, hippie, I'm sorry, Misha's breathing that I've noticed seemed to be a little off. It was an inquiry. I wanted to know if this is something that I should be concerned about. So when I spoke with the girl, um, that was basically what it was. Uh, when I spoke with one of the uh, girls that works there, uh, I told her that I was concerned because I already lost one uh, family member and I didn't want to lose another one. I wanted to nip, if it is a, a problem or a potential problem, I wanted to nip it on in the butt. She, I guess she went to uh, speak uh, to uh, Dr. Spender because she asked, well, who's her attending doctor? And I said, well, it's normally Dr. Collada, but that particular uh, day that I had to take her in for this other issue, it was Dr. Spender's that was, was handling her. And this is still a continuation of his treatment with her. So, she went and asked him. Uh, he responded and she came back and said, well, Dr. Spender could see her, Misha, the next following day, which would have been Saturday, as a drop-off. They, I drop her off, they look at her when they have time, and then I pick her up when they're done. Uh, I, I told him I, I can't commit myself to that because it, it's short notice. I don't have transportation. I don't know if I can have transportation. So, I just left it at... Uh, I, when I spoke with her, I said, let's do this. I'm going to monitor her. But if you can, if you can ask Dr. Spender to call me at the end of his day before he leaves, so I can just, you know, explain to him what I've noticed. Uh, if he has a moment to review the, you know, the tape or the video, then he could, you know, either speak with me or, or text me either way. To let me know what he advises me to do with her. Either bring her in, try a home uh, remedy, or whatever. So, after that, something happened to Misha. I don't know what happened from the time I, I had 
left my apartment for 10 seconds, she was you know, really, I, I knew something was wrong with her because she wasn't responding the way she normally does. I noticed she was extremely bloated while laying on the bed. She really didn't really care to make any type of con eye contact with me. So I figured, okay, maybe she doesn't feel well. I'll leave her, take care of what I have to do real quick, come back and you know, care for her. I walk out the door, I forget my mask, 12 seconds, 12 seconds, she's on the bed, come in the door, and now she's on the floor, laying in a pool of urine and vomit. And my first thought was, with all that urine, she lost control of her bladder. She was laying on the floor, prone on her side, uh, she had vomit on both sides of her torso, so that leads me to believe she was flipping. I don't know if she was having a seizure or what happened, but she had a, a straight gaze, uh, glazed over look as though somebody was dying, and her breathing was like she was gasping. I don't know what happened. So, of course, I panicked. I called the hospital. This is now an hour after I spoke with them initially that morning. The girl got on the phone. Um, I'm frantic. I, you know, I, I don't know what to do. I asked her. I said, "This is what's happening." I said, "I think she's dying. I, you know, I don't want her to suffer. I need to bring her in." She says, she puts me on hold. She comes back and she goes, "How soon can you bring her in?" I told her, "I don't know. I gotta find arrangements. I said, if I can, I'll let you know." I found arrangements. I called her. And she says, okay, let me go tell them that, you know, that you, you found a ride. And she comes back and she said, okay, they're aware of it. Now, she says they. She didn't specifically name who, but she says they are aware of it and they are awaiting you to arrive with her. That was her exact words. I get there. There is nobody there to wait for her. They don't know what I'm talking about. I asked to speak to the girl who I spoke with. They tell me she's gone. I said, well, what was her name? They wouldn't tell me. So this is a follow. So I called because they said, you might as well go home because there's no one here to look at her. I told her she, she was laying in a puddle of her own um, you know, bodily fluids and, and she, couldn't, she couldn't even stand very well so I said since she's here can somebody look at her I said I don't care who it is you know, when I called I didn't ask for anyone in particular I didn't ask for Dr. Spender I didn't ask for anybody I said you know I you know I need to bring her in I don't care who looks at her at that point her 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 health is extremely important to me they said no we can't do nothing can't help you so I get on the phone and I, Dr. Spender, you know, texts me, and he, in, in his text message, he goes, you can call me anytime. I don't know if you can see that. Uh, there's a glare. I don't know. I can't see it in the glare, but it's, it's there. It says, you can call me anytime, Dr. Adam Spender. So, I called him from the, uh, waiting room in the uh, well, they call it a hospital but it's not a hospital and I want to find out what's going on um, you know this is you know something important to me this is you know I'm concerned about Misha's health they're her doctor uh, you, know, this, you know and he went straight to his voicemail I explained to him what had transpired. Uh, this issue with Misha, w with her laying in her body fluids, had, uh, wasn't even what I called originally for. And I explained that to him. And I told him, I'm in your lobby. I don't know what to do now. Doctor, you know, her primary, they wouldn't even, you know, the primary doctor, the, uh, the receptionist says, well, uh, the only doctor we have on hand right now is Dr. Collada, and uh, we don't know if he even wants to see Misha. That's what the, this is what I believe Maria, that was Maria, told me. 
And I see Dr. Sp uh, Dr. A um, Kalata come out, and uh, at that point, I, I, I didn't want to get him involved because if he doesn't know, I need to know why would this girl, and I, I, if I hear her name, I'll know who it is. They wouldn't even give me the names. So there was no need for me to address this with Dr. Collado. Cheryl is one who should have come out and, and, and uh, dealt with me. So after that, I uh, got a message from Dr. Spender. It didn't even seem like he was concerned about it. Uh, he made it clear that he wasn't aware about the incident after my initial first call. And he, he left a negative comment, which I'm not going to get into right now. But um, I, wait, I responded to that. And I explained to him, you know, what was going on. And I asked him, listen, do you, I mean, do you want me to bring her in? I'd like to bring her in. And I waited that day for a response to his response on Friday. I didn't get a response from him for Friday. So Saturday, I had to give Misha her uh, treatment. Uh, I'm sorry, her, I can't pronounce the, um, the treatment uh, medical term. It's scap scapulous flu uh, treatment, a scapulous, something like that. But that requires you to administer a certain amount of milliliters of uh, electrolytes under her fur to help I like, flush her the toxins in her kidney because she has, uh, as far as I know, at this point, stage two renal failure. So I need to also make an appointment to have her tested to see where we're at with that. And I need to f find out, get their opinion on right now where we're at. What is the quality of her life? by me continuing giving her these fluids because I don't know if these are making her sick. So I sent him the video Saturday. I still haven't received a response from that. And here we are Monday, uh, June 18th. So uh, I, uh, just a little while ago, uh, here's the videos of I, what I sent him. I had to send him uh, the video is in four parts because of the size of the uh, file. It was just too large to send via text, so I had to break it down into four parts. I haven't re received a response. In the video, you can see her, the way she's breathing. It's like a a cough. Her When she, when she does it, of course, her chest cavity kind of jerks. But I also noticed that when she does it, her leg tends to like spasm. I don't know if that's involuntary or if that's due to the coughing. This is an issue that he could, uh, Dr. Spender could look at. Maybe that's something he's familiar with. Maybe he can advise me whether I should be concerned or if this is just normal, you know, nothing. I haven't heard nothing. So this morning, I was on a call at, uh, um, 8.30, quarter to 9 to see if he was in. Uh, but I had to take Misha up because I have to now uh, put her on a schedule where I have to get her up every four to maybe five hours to get her to go to the bathroom because I don't want her holding it. I think that her holding it causes another problem for her and that's a urinary tract infection which I'm treating right now as well. Uh, and I the text message says, and this was at, uh, let's see, um, I sent it at 1029. Right now it's 1038, so almost 10 minutes ago. Hi, Dr. Spender. Do you have a moment to review the, the video of Misha's breathing that I sent you? And uh, I know I think he's probably with a, with a client, so I, didn't, I don't expect him to respond to it right now. I'm hoping that he does see it and that he does respond to me before the end of his day. And that's how I, and that's what I, you know, what I would, that's what I always request. I don't expect them to, any of the doctors to drop what they're doing at that moment because I know they're probably with a client, a patient. 
I'd rather have them at their at their leisure after they're done with their day just to call me uh, to let me know what I should do what they advise me to do I've always been like that I haven't heard nothing yet so I'm gonna try to send the video to their mobile number at the clinic well it's a hot they say it's a hospital it's a clinic it's misleading uh, here I even all these years I was under the impression it was a hospital just to find out as of recent that it's not so um, this is where we're at right now this is now I'm gonna call them and I'm gonna call them right now and I'm gonna bet you anything well maybe but I'm gonna guess that I'm not gonna be able to get through it's gonna go straight to their voicemail or they do answer and I'm thinking whether it's coming from Cheryl instructions from Cheryl or maybe Dr. Spencer I don't know that they don't want nothing to do with me Cheryl. and if that's the case are they trying to hurt me or are they trying to hurt Misha because of whatever I don't see it as any fault on my part I know exactly what I told that young lady when I called Friday I don't know what she said to Dr. Spender if she even spoke to Dr. Spender or whoever she spoke to I don't know if she actually spoke to anybody but if she did why didn't that message uh, why didn't they act on that message or why couldn't they have told me called me because I had to drag my neighbor to you know take me there in in, in, uh, in, a, in a quick meth method of driving me there to help help Misha they could have called me and said hey don't we can't see you don't come in that okay I would have I wouldn't mind that but to get there carrying her I had to carry Misha in to be told you gotta leave there's nothing we can do for you know Misha you should have told me that either before I left while I was on the phone or on my way there which probably wouldn't have been as happy but it's a lot better than finding out halfway there than to find out when I get there that there's nothing to be done if they tell me they don't want to see Misha this is that would for, to me I take that as retaliatory because I'm I'm being a nuisance that I'm, I'm speaking up for them because she, in their condition her condition it, dogs can't defend themselves they can't speak and tell you what's wrong with them that's why if you're if you take on responsibility of responsibility of caring for a pet you need to follow through from the beginning all the way to the end and that's what I've done with my girls I lost one Sharpay already due to the negligence of Cheryl the office manager at Pulaski Animal Hospital this is a record a track record that she's had with me after, for several years and re going over some of the Google reviews I could see that it extends into other uh, into the reviews of the office manager at Pulaski Animal Hospital which I know happens to be Cheryl other pet parents who have had negative experiences all are commenting on the same problem being uh, you know spoken to by someone rude or not getting any phone calls at all after they're being promised that they'll get receive a call back during the day or before the end of the day and I know Dr. Spender's aware of it yet he's it doesn't seem like he's addressing the issue and especially what happened with Misha I'm, I'm, I'm sorry hippie I, I made it clear to him that this Cheryl has to be addressed either she is reprimanded uh, or had, has a talking to or something but this can't go on they're there to care for pets regardless I mean if it's something really major like the dog just got hit and it's just internal injuries or whatever it could be yeah maybe maybe all right they can't they may not be able or wanting to see it because of the extents of the injuries but with this 
This was just an inquiry, initially started as an inquiry on what to do about her breathing. And look at where we're at now. I didn't take her in on a Saturday because uh, I asked the girl, uh, Maria, that Friday, if the uh, slot opening for a drop-off was still available. And she checked. She said, well, there's two, eight, 8.45. And I told her, well, I'm going to try to bring her in. If I can get, make sure, if I'm sure I can get a right to bring her in, in the morning, I'll call you to let you know. If I can't, then I'm not going to call. I'll, you know, I'll try calling Monday to see if I can s set up a schedule for an appointment with her, with them. So I'm going to call them right now. So let's see, um, let's see if they even pick up, first of all. Might go straight to voicemail because they have caller ID. I found out that they did when I was told they didn't. <coughs> it's 10:45 now. They're open today. You have reached Pulaski Animal Hospital. This phone number is for outgoing calls only. Please do not leave a voicemail. Call our main number at 77. Okay, I'm sorry. I thought I, I did dial their uh, main number. Uh, apparently, I dialed their mobile number, which is where I send all of the videos. That's what I was instructed to do, to send it to their mobile number. So let me do that. All right, I got to make sure I send, I had to break the uh, original video into four parts because the size of the uh, the file, it wouldn't allow me to send it via text. So I want to make sure I send the video in proper order. Do you know what? I'm going to put this video... Oh, no, I'm not. I'm going to let it play. Uh, i got to make sure that I'm doing this right, because right now, the way what's, it's leaving me really flustered. Okay, uh, this is... Okay, I know which one. Okay. Got it.
Okay, so I'm going to, I'm, I just sent the video right now, and I'm typing. This is what I'm concerned about involving Misha's breathing. That's what I'm going to type right now. is this cause to be concerned? Thank you. Okay. Sending it. Just sent it. All right. So let me go through to their uh, main number. All right. All right. Now we're dialing it. Let's see what. Okay. The busy signal. Seems like it hung up automatically. Hmm. Let's try it again. Line busy. Okay. All right. I'm going to try back in about five, ten minutes. So I'll stop the video now and I'll restart the video in five minutes and see what happens.